Hi guys, you're welcome to another video. My name is Kemi Omorugwe, in case you're new here. Today I have a topic burning in my heart to discuss and I'll be starting it off with a story time of my own partner experience. So I've had a couple of house helps. If you are not Nigerian or you are not African, this may be strange to you, but we get this living helps. Oh gosh, it's a, it's a huge topic as I'm even trying to communicate. Um, getting different branches of it, the societal factor, the in income and all of those things. But well, let me try and focus on <laughs> my point today, which is how they choose to live a lot of times. I've had the good, the bad and the ugly side of things. So late 2022, I got this living help. She came in at the perfect time when I needed her. My mom was on admission. I was running health skater with two kids and you know how it is. She came in right in time and we agreed on payments and all that. Just a few days later, we discovered she had a medical condition that needed surgery. And I had the option of taking her back to the person that brought her because she hadn't even spent a week with us, just a few days and she needed a surgery. So at that point, I considered taking her back to say, oh, we didn't bargain for this, we can't, you know, sort your surgery. But then I called her and I asked her, if you leave, if you go back, can someone fund this for you? Will someone be able to pay for your surgery? And she said no. And at that point, I just knew that we had to somehow come in and help her, whether she decides to stay with us or not. There was this doubt because many of them do that. They come because you don't have any written contract with them. They just choose to leave at any time, no matter what you do or how you try to keep them. Some of them come that way. So there was that fear. But then the human part of me and the Christian part of me just felt, okay, this is an opportunity to help another human being. If we don't do it and she loses her life, I won't forgive myself. So myself and my husband, we discussed things and we had it sorted out, but we also told her that, okay, we are doing this, please, as much as possible, be loyal. Don't leave without informing us and all of those sorts. So thankfully she stayed with us for a year and which I'm truly grateful for that period I was pregnant and it would have been hell if she wasn't around. Then there came December when she told me she wanted to travel and i'm not in the habit of forcing you to stay where you want to go but then i called her no place to leave this baby for now i'm home alone <laughs> so she's going to be doing this with us and she doesn't want to stick her <laughs> so i asked her are you sure you're going to come back if you won't come back please let me know now i had to ask her because the help i had before then stayed for a month and one Sunday afternoon she said her father was calling her she needs to go and I was like okay tomorrow morning we'll arrange for you to travel and I said no I need to go now and the next thing I was hearing was that she was still in Benin City that's my town where I am and she got married to someone in Benin City so I didn't want that kind of a shock because it can really destabilize things for us so she said no she's gonna stay I believed her I even asked her because we were saving up a part of our money for her. We are giving her some part of our salary and saving up a part of it for her. Then I asked her, do you want all your money or you still want to save some with us? And she was like, no, she doesn't want all of it. She still wants to save some. This girl is a young girl. I don't like taking very young helps because the, the work is not exactly an easy work. And I have children already. I don't want another child to, ca to take to care for. But when she came, she told me she was 16. I asked for her, her date of birth. She didn't know her date of birth, so she wasn't even sure. So I just took it out, okay, she's around 16, even though it's still young, but at the same time, we are not sure. I just decided she, she would work with us. That was how she stayed. So as at the time, she had spent a year with us, that she was 17, right? Back to the story, I asked her if she wanted to take all her money and she was like no 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 just give me part of it she didn't even specify i just decided to give her a certain amount then we gave her some gifts for christmas as well with the hope that she will come back she bought a new box and left her former box that's the box she came in with see are you going to allow me to do this are you 
She left her box, one of her boxes at home, the smaller one, and that kind of gave me this assurance that, okay, she will come back. Because I really wanted if she was going to leave then, we should know so that we can part ways properly, like appreciate her, and I can also try to get another help. But then the way she, she, she left, it felt like she was coming. That was her plan. I believe that was her plan. I'm not sure she had any plan not to come back. Okay, I successfully dropped this baby girl that is currently watching me. <laughs> She's even smiling. Hopefully she will stay calm and let me do this because I almost gave up. So like I was saying, immediately she got home, she's from Plato State. Immediately she got home, she called me that she needed transport fare. And I was like, what about the money I gave her? Because the, what I gave her, I felt it would be enough to take her to and through. I even told her that, okay, make sure you separate your transport fare before going. So she called me that she needed part of her money and I asked her, what did you use the money I gave you for? She said transport was so so and so amount and I said, okay, what about the rest? The amount she called was about half of what I gave her. So I said, okay, what about the rest? She said she bought shoe and I felt, well, you have shoes. Why are you buying shoe again? Then I just left it because I felt, okay, maybe she bought for her sister or something. But that was where that conversation ended. and. I sent her another transport fee. At this point, she told me that her sister wanted to come as well. So I should ask a relative if she still wants a house help so that her sister will come. And I went, okay, they must have seen that she's doing well because she changed, she became robust. <laughs> her face became fine. Just that one year that she stayed with us. So I felt, oh, they must have seen how good she's looking and, you know, and of course, the fact that she was more suffering. Everybody that knows me, I'm not just praising myself. I don't treat my help badly. I treat them well, like my sisters. And I, I can never get to the point where I'm hitting my help because I feel they are my employees. So when we go to the office and your employee didn't do well, and then you take a cane and flog that your employee, that's just abnormal to me. If I can't work with you, I'll suck you, you go rather than I have children that I need to invest my emotional energy in training. I just feel I can't now get physical with help. <laughs> so well, back to the gist. So I decided, okay, I will take that up. I'll call the relative of mine that needed the help to find out if she still needs a help. So and, and we'll get back to you. That was where we concluded that conversation. So this was late December. So early January, she called and I told her, oh, so so and so person said she still needs a help. If your sister is still interested, should I send the transport fare? Should she send the transport fare? And she was like, yeah, 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 she's coming. She now told me, oh, I'll be coming on the 5th. That's 5th of January, Friday, I think. And I said, oh, that's fine and all that. So on 5th of January, because I was having issues contacting her, she wasn't using a phone. So getting her sometimes, I'll have to call certain people that will call, you, you get it. So I got back to her on 5th of January, the day she said she was coming back. And when I spoke with her, she was like, I said, oh, you said you were coming today. Why are you not here? She said she will come. She will come on Monday. There's a weekend in between, right? And I told her, okay, this relative of mine is interested in still getting a help. Um, send the account details, we'll send you transport fare and all. I was like meditating between my relative and herself. So, recall that I've sent her transport fare, right? She called me again on Sunday before the Monday she was supposed to come. And she was like, ah, I need transport fare for myself. And I was like, but I said you transport fare already. She said, you know, that the money was not enough. I said, okay, okay, it is your money. You know, you have spent so, so, and so amount, and this is what you have left. She said, yes, yes, she knows. She just send it and I was like, okay what about your sister's own is she's interested in coming she said yes so uh, my relative sent me the money and I added it to her own transport fare and sent it to her so Monday morning the day she was supposed to come I received a call first I heard a lady's voice it wasn't hers so I was like what happened who are you who am I speaking with and all that the network was misbehaving so the call cut and then a guy called me and so 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 person staying with you and i said okay what happened to her because i was really scared if you know our roads are dangerous and 
my heart just skipped the beats when she mentioned her name. When he mentioned her name, oh, my earring keeps pulling off. Come on, baby. I was like, the girl where they stay with you, she don't marry. <laughs> that she has gotten married. I was like, okay, give her the phone. Because I felt I don't have any business with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> the guy continued again. Nami Mariam, that's. I am the one that got married to her. I was like, okay, good. Please give her the phone. So he handed over the phone. So I was like, they said you got married. He said, yes. When did you marry? Yesterday. The same yesterday that she was calling me on the phone to send her transport fare for both herself and her sister. That Sunday, I actually asked her, are you sure your sister is coming? If she isn't coming and I send money, you're going to refund the money to my relative with your own money and she was like yes her sister is coming so i was shocked when i received this news that she got married that same sunday that day that we were calling i was like it felt strange what did i do to deserve <laughs> what did i do to deserve this i've been in contact with you throughout the christmas new year break you didn't mention that you were you were getting married i felt she must have known probably the moment she got home and yet she kept being deceptive telling me that she's coming and she's central for first central it just didn't make sense because even if you wanted to leave even if you got to know when you got there and you need your money just tell me i'll send it to you why would i keep your money if that's let's assume she just wanted to deceptively collect her money and moreover even at this point she still had some money with me she still had some money we were keeping for her so it just didn't make sense because i felt you can be upfront with me if you decide to get married then you should let me know but what i think made her feel guilty and not bold enough to say oh my people said i should marry because i believe that's what it is she wasn't planning to get married otherwise she would have taking all her things and probably all her money as well maybe she was feeling guilty that oh these people did so much for me you know paying for my surgery and taking care of me all this while and i would just disappoint them probably that was what she felt so well that was it a little backstory when she was with me i kept on asking for her relatives number don't you have anybody you can call from home she said no but eventually somebody called a guy and the guy said he was her uncle this guy called once but at the point when she traveled home anytime i need to send money to her i was using the guy's account number so the said guy called me and she was like, oh, I'm very sorry that she got married. <laughs> How will you be apologizing for getting married? I was like, that's not even my problem. But why would she be deceiving me? That's the problem. It's not her getting married. Because a part of me feel pity for her. A part of me felt she must have been forced or I don't know. But I later got to know she had a boyfriend even before coming to my house. But still, she wasn't planning to marry that time, 17 year old. I at home okay so the guy called and was like ah that she, she's he he actually called them i said is this woman maltreating you and she said no we don't, we don't maltreat helps here he said he asked her if she was being maltreated and he said no that she's still a very young girl why she this guy appears to be a little bit enlightened and speaks fairly good english so i believe he's educated to an extent and I think he's a far relative. Her mom is late and he said he was the mom's brother, something like that. So maybe her dad's family and sister, she, I don't know the story behind all of that. But she decided not to come back. Not only that, she deceived me in the process. Some days later, she actually called telling me that um, her sister said they have sent me the money. And I'm like, which money? Please don't send me any money. It's part of your money. It's not my money. They shouldn't send me any money and I caught the call and told her not to call again because I don't know why you felt I, des I deserve to be deceived. But once again, the problem was not her living, the problem was the deception, the fact that you were calling me knowing fully well what was going on. 
Now let me get back to the main gist. Probably the reason why you clicked on this video, but the story time has taken so long, even though I was trying not to take your time. One, many times house helps have been maltreated. We don't treat our helps like our employees. I have seen many people maltreat young children, you know, flogging them, making them sleep in the kitchen, making them dress tattered. My house help, she they wear sunshade. You understand what I mean? She dresses up well. I taught her how to sew, so she was part of my students. She makes her clothes, she buys ah, please pardon this my earring. She buys clothes, it's uh, her part of money that we give her. She shops more than I shop. Yeah, I don't buy clothes for my children the way she buys clothes and shoes. So I'm not just trying to say this. If you are, if you live around me, you know what I'm saying. But many times these girls are maltreated and they are just looking for escape. Many of them take this job because they don't have so much options and they are hoping they will be treated well. But a lot of time, people are wicked. People are generally wicked. I don't know why. But many people maltreat their house help. That's the first reason why if they have an opportunity to travel to leave your house, they, they may not want to come back again. Secondly, early marriage. Many of them, like my help, may not have planned to, you know, not come back. But when they travel, their people insist. They're basically sold, forced. They don't mind whether they are children as long as you started menstruating and you have small boobs. <laughs> so, early marriage. Many of them are victims of early marriage. That is why they may not come back to you. Probably they've been whisked away into the arms of one man. Another reason why many of them don't come back is house help. It's not really futuristic. It's not a long-term goal. <laughs> many of them came because they are hustling. They just need to survive. And they may have saved a certain amount of money that they feel will be okay for them. It is not anybody's long-term dream to remain in house help. They are there because they found themselves in a helpless situation. Many of them had to stop school because they could not fund it. So they said, okay, let me come and work a little bit here. So it is not a long time. I just wish um, I wish many of them will be will come clean, okay, and you know, this December when they are going, they can actually tell you oh, I'm going and that's all. I had a help like that, she still visits me. We did a video, we did a video together and she appeared in some of my vlogs. If I remember, I'll link it up in the description box. I filmed the video with her, She's, she happened to have come back to Benin. She's now married, living in Benin here and Anytime I have an occasion, I invite her. She'll be having a baby soon. I mean, we are that with Cordia, okay? So she told me when she was leaving, oh, she needs to move closer home because she has a son and she wants to go and work in Abuja. Abuja is closer to Kaduna. And yeah, that was how she left. So many of them don't know this, probably because they are still young. They burn bridges and they don't really care about you because especially if you have been maltreating them, they don't really care about you. They just want to escape that situation. One of the reasons why many of them don't come back. Another reason why some of them may not come back is waywardness. Some of them are already exposed, maybe before they even came to you, and some of them in the process. I had a help then, she was a student, but then I found out after she had left my house that once she goes to school, she leaves school and goes elsewhere. Apparently she wasn't interested in studying. And at the end of the day, of course, she couldn't stay because we were restricting her from going out the way she wanted to. And you, you'll be watching her dressing. They just want that freedom and they don't tear eye already. So they want to, you know, go their way. That, that's another reason why some of them don't stay, especially over the holiday period. They just find an opportunity to escape <laughs> and they're not coming back again. Yes, last but not the least, from my own end, if you have others, okay, reasons why you think many of them don't stay on the job for long or they run away over the holiday period, let me know in the comment section. The last but not the least, some of them are overworked, honestly. When I didn't have a help here, see, being a house help is a full-time job. And if you are doing something else and still trying to do the house help job, you know what I mean. This period when I didn't have a help, 
wanted to go crazy it's a lot guys so that's why it's a full-time job that one person needs to do without combining other myself alone with my without children with my job i don't mind not having any help okay but if you are trying to do a job <laughs> another job and then you, you you you're still trying to do the house job <laughs> it's a lot even for two heads that's your spouse and yourself it's still a lot so men, some of them are overworked so if you have like three children and you know you live in a big house you may want to look into getting two two helps or maybe an external cleaner that will be coming in to clean in the mornings and then you have a house help and sometimes you you have a baby and and then you add a new job description. They are not just hot help, they are also your nanny. I don't think that's fair. Um, I have a baby and I try as much as possible to just handle everything that has to do with the baby. Your job is to take care of the house. So when you are combining so many things, some people will have shops. It's this girl that will be sales girl in the shop. It's this girl that will be the house help. It's this girl that will be the nanny. I don't think that's fair. Get a sales person, a sales girl for your shops. If you need a nanny, get a nanny and try not to combine combine it <laughs> too much. It may, they may lose the motivation. Then many times they are underpaid because it's not in a structured system. Like many of them are paid less than minimum wage. Many people employ them under age. I try as much as possible not to, but sometimes I, I had a help that was 16, like I said. So sometimes they just come really young. My other help that left was 20 something, which I really enjoyed her service. She knew she was working. But some of them that are underage, they don't yet understand the concept of employment, working and getting paid. And many times they may even think you are maltreating them when they are actually doing their job. So they are not yet grown enough to even be in a job in the first place. So as much as possible, avoid employing an underage help. My own landmark is 16. I don't want to go below 16, okay? I know it's easy for an outsider to say, oh, even 16 is underage. Some of them, the job is advantageous to them. Many of them get to have a better life where they are working than where they are coming from. Unfortunately, the economic situation in the country is so, so bad that See guys, I think we need to have like a different conversation about this, the structure of these house help issues. There are a lot of things, you know, modeled up in all of that. Many people don't pay these people their what. Now your payments can be you housing them. I know that most time because they are living, they are living helps. You house them, you feed them, and then the rest as cash allowance. But let the combination of all of that let it make sense. Uh, my former housewife was telling me that she worked for someone after she left our place and this person does not even provide food enough for her. Like she, the, the lady would leave home, would not give them food, they are hungry during the day, no energy to work, they manage to do some things, they come home, she comes back, they are still starving and because they are living here, that's supposed to be part of the benefit and then you still deny them of that. So that's there. So in my opinion, these are some of the reasons why many of them tend to leave. And sometimes without prior notice, if you have any other reasons you think this happens, let me know in the comment section. But if you have a help as much as you can, be a woman. I'm not even asking you to be extra nice. They will still do what they will do, but that should not change who you are as a person. Like, I can easily say, okay, if I have another help now, this is how I will deal with her. This is no, the person that left, the way she left, she's on her own. It does not have to impact the next help I get. In as much as it's good to be careful and, you know, still be official, but still be friendly. If you're going to live in a place, you can't exactly treat it like a formal setting where you go to work and we are just formal. And then when you come home, we know we are not together again. But for somebody you live with, it's not easy to just be formal and say this is just strictly business. Somehow you have to still incorporate them into your family. We, yes, we may not get back what we are investing in the way that we are investing in somebody you are calling family. That is not exactly seeing you as a family. But that should not change who you are as a person. So I'm just, it pains me when I see people maltreat help. 
because many of them are actually helpless none of them will normally want to be in your house to work for you many of them is just because either their parents are irresponsible or their parents are actually just poor and they had to be there at that time so just put yourself in their shoes as well treat them as family and at the same time as an employee like i said earlier on you won't just slap your employee you won't tell your employee knee down if you can't if that if that working relationship is not working they will just go their way you sack them you dismiss them you won't resort to physical or even verbal abuse with your colleague at work right so that's how you should treat your helps as well and also try as much as possible to avoid underage help imagine now forcing a child to do a job that an adult should handle now there's a there's a mix up i told you that this system is complex sometimes it is family members that want to live with you they want you to maybe train them in school at the same time they are coming in to help you you are not paying them cash you just want to absorb them into the family and train them but everybody knows they are your house so most time that arrangement results in rubbish that's why most time i also avoid relatives relative is in your house no they are not really expecting you to pay them and at the same time they may feel like you are not paying them as guys as much as you can to save yourself headache and to preserve your relationship with relative stay away from taking relatives as house help you can if you bring a relative to your house to come and live with you that you want to help them let it be known that you are helping them, not that they are coming to work for you, not that they are coming to do house help job. You know, sometimes you say you want to help them, but you bring them into your house and the next thing they are cleaning, they are sweeping, they are that. And many times they come in young, 10 years, 8 years, 12 years, we have seen such. The arrangement is not clear. It results in discord. At the end of the day, nobody will appreciate what you are doing. The children themselves will see you as wicked because they are working in your house. When they grow up, you'll be one of their main enemies in life because you maltreated them when they were growing up. They won't understand that. Oh, you brought them in to work and you just want to treat them. Mm -mm -mm. Let there be a good definition of expectations. And I would really love to see a more coordinated system. Even the ones with agents, they are not well coordinated. Sometimes you employ help from agents and they are the ones collecting the salary. They are splitting it into half, taking part of it and sending. It's been free. Gosh, it's been a lot today. Tiara is currently complaining, so I just have to round up this video. So, but before I go, all this I have said from my own perspective. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And please, if you enjoyed watching this, just give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Now, thank you very much for watching. I'll be reading my comment section to hear what you have to say about this. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye. This guy's crying. <laughs> Complaining, not crying.